with the Sermon on the Mount, uh, where the Lord uh, is uh, teaching us how that we as believers ought to walk and how that Israel should walk before the law. Now, he's been doing quite a lot with this in Matthew chapter 5. You remember uh, that the law does one thing. It establishes justice. When we read, uh, so for instance, in Matthew 5 uh, uh, and uh, Verse 38, it says, Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. We found out last week that Israel had so perverted the law as to make it serve them, uh, to give a right, even almost a privilege, to have revenge and uh, uh, to take uh, recompense against people because an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And what Jesus is establishing is that that was never the intent of the law. The law has one purpose, ladies and gentlemen, and that is justice. An eye for an eye, an equal balance. A foot for a foot, an equal balance. It's talking about justice, amen. The law offers nothing other than justice. It has no grace. It has no uh, love, no compassion. When we look at the law, the Bible tells us it, the law cannot even give the grace of salvation to any man. Uh, uh, so that uh, when we look at law, any grace that you find there is added into the law by God's love, for the, such as the sacrifices and what have you that allowed men to uh, have a, a blood covering for their sin that they might still come before God. So the law's one purpose was justice. And Israel was to live according to the justice prescribed by the law and according to the way that God had laid it out for them. And we had talked about the foundation of justice and uh, last week or two weeks ago as being established in several verses. We had used Exodus 21. You can go back and look those up. I'll give them to you later if you'd like. Leviticus 24, Deuteronomy 19. All of these have to do with the justice, the fairness of law. Fairness just means just, just as if it didn't happen. Something occurs and we uh, we uh, deal with it, and when it's done, we're both at peace with the situation. That's justice. Amen? So, uh, we found that uh, justice had been perverted. We talked about that already. I'll get on past that. But tonight, we're going to deal with something a little bit different. You understand that the, that the uh, Israel lived under the law. Amen? We're not Israel. We're the church. We're the people of God by the second birth. Israel was the people of God by a covenant relationship. Uh, we are born into the family of God uh, uh, by the Spirit of God, by our own faith, not according to a bloodline, but by our faith. And so Jesus, as he comes down into Matthew chapter 5, verses 38, and I'm going to read these for you, I, I just kind of get us back into the lesson. Uh, uh, 38 says, You have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Justice, 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 justice. See that, do not see revenge. It was never intended for that. Amen. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, uh, turn to him the other uh, also. And if any man, now wait, what would justice say? Remember the law is justice. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a foot for a foot, a cow for a cow, a servant for a servant, justice, justice, justice. And he says this, uh, but I say unto you, he says, not evil, uh, uh, evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, do what? Smite him on the other cheek. Justice. Is that not right? An eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, a cheek for a cheek. That's justice. Jesus says, wait a minute. There's something better than justice. There's something that goes past justice. The law knows nothing about it, but you and I do by the Spirit of God and by the love of God. We're born out of love. Now we have uh, uh, something that's given to us that is not justice, but it goes past justice. I titled the message uh, this evening, Mercy, Not Justice. You know, one of these days we're going to appear before the throne of God. Every man will appear before God and give an account for those things that he's done uh, in this flesh. Amen? Are you, what are you looking for? Justice? So that you can say where God will say, in this hand I have sin, and in this hand my sin is appeased by justice, which is hell. No, when I go before God, I don't want justice. I want mercy, Amen. grace, and love. I want God to wash everything clean by His blood. I don't want Him to look for recompense. I don't want Him to hold the scale of my failure and balance, uh, balance it with His justice or with His law, because I'm going to come out on the short end of the stick. And that's what Jesus is saying here. He says, But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but uh, that whosoever smite thee on the right cheek, 
you don't smite him on the left, you're not looking for justice. But this is what he says, turn to him the other cheek. Go the extra mile. Demonstrate a, 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 a love that will even accept offense and even be uh, uh, able to receive wounding if that be necessary and still respond as God responds when He examines us in, in our sin and he, he responds in love and mercy and grace. Amen? Now, this is what Jesus said. Uh, uh, and I just, we, we read down through verse 38. I guess I should have read on. Uh, verse 40 says, And if any man will sue thee at, at law... And take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. If he sues you at law, now listen to me, if he sues you at law, he has a dispute with you, and he goes to the law, the law's looking for justice. So if you have done something worthy uh, of a lawsuit and the law decides for him and the law says justice in this relationship is that you have to surrender your cloak. That would give justice. The suit's over. The, uh, the balance of the weights are done. It's done. And then Jesus said this, Ah, but go further. If he wants your cloak, notice what he says, uh, uh, If he wants your coat, let him have your cloak also. Amen? That's not justice anymore, folks. Now you're on the short end of the stick if you measure it from worldly goods. Now the scales has went this way uh, 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 in the balance. It's no longer justice. It's gone past Justice. That's what Jesus is going to teach. Amen. And so all these verses are not teaching revenge or, or, or any kind of uh, retribution. It's teaching uh, justice. And when justice has been reached, then going beyond what justice. So this is what I put down. Go over to John chapter 13. I thought I marked that. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. That's why. John is after Matthew, isn't it? John chapter 13. And I want you to kind of, I, 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 I didn't look at what time I started. I have an intention of trying to stay this at about 20 minutes. So, John chapter 13. And I want you to read with me starting in verse 33. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye, see, uh, ye shall seek me, and as I said unto the, uh, the Jews, uh, whether I go, ye cannot come. So now I say unto you. Now listen to this. A new commandment give I unto you. No, no. How is that possible? Please help me. Talk to me a little bit. I go back to Exodus chapter 20, and I see the Ten Commandments. That was given on the Mount of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Sinai, and was the very foundation upon which the covenant of Israel was to stand. It was that law that God uh, uh, put uh, the covenant under and then did give mercy and grace. We understand that, that they might be able to bear up under it. But the law was established in those Ten Commandments in all of the Old Testament. And we even understand all of the New Testaments founded upon that law of justice. All the Ten Commandments in Exodus are repeated in the New Testament with the exception of the Sabbath day, which we by the church celebrate on the resurrection day, not on the finished work of, of creation. Make sense? So for all these years, the law is in place. And as the disciples go out and the Holy Spirit begins to move in them and they begin to author the New Testament, Jesus comes up. You understand why the Jews had a problem here? They said, you came to destroy the law. How can you give a new law to something that's already been here 5,000 years that Israel has lived with for that length of time. How can you now come up and say, a new law I give you, because it's not of the same foundation and covenant that was given to Israel. It's of the covenant of our faith, the second birth, that salvation that we have in Christ, all being baptized into one spirit by, or into one body by one God. And Jesus says, you have a better commandment. You're not looking for justice. You're looking for love. You're looking for mercy. You're looking for commandment or for, uh, 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 uh. I forgot what it was, grace. Uh, and he says here, a new commandment I give you. It wasn't a commandment of the law. It was never intended to be in Exodus chapter 20. It's not part of that relationship that Abraham uh, uh, got from God in the covenant that uh, Israel was founded upon. It, has, it is a new commandment given to the church. Not justice, but love. You see how he changed it? 
He, he, didn't, he didn't destroy the law. He said, I'm bringing you past the law. Justice is still, uh, is still served. There should be justice. There should be a fairness amongst us uh, in the judgment of our, of our uh, society. But then there doesn't, listen to me, there doesn't have to be a law or a satisfying of the law. You can step up and say, I will suffer the loss. Doesn't the Bible say, if you have odd with a lot with your brother, you're better off to suffer the loss than to taking the court? That's not justice. That's love. Amen. Amen. He says, A new commandment give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By Listen to this. Verse 35. By this shall all men know that ye are my, what? Disciples. Amen. If ye have love one for the other. How, did, how was it that the world knew that Israel was the uh, the followers of Jehovah God. By the law. Amen? They had a temple that they went to. They, they lived under the law, though they perverted it. By the time Jesus got here, it was so out of whack, nobody recognized it. But it was still that which was given to them uh, uh, for their success and for their very blessings of God was under the law. Now Jesus said, now they, everyone knew who Israel was because of how they served the law. They had the temple, they had the Word of God, they had the nation that was given to them by God, and they had a circumcision, which was the evidence that they were born as a Jew. All these things said, that's a Jewish man, that's one of God's children. Amen. Everybody, every Gentile nation knew who a Jew was. Jesus says there's something better than law that we can identify with. And it's love. And by that, and can I'm going to tell you, it's a whole lot harder to serve the, lo the law of love than it is to serve the law of justice. Because justly, when I have justice and my neighbor comes over uh, uh, and cuts down my tree for whatever reason he does, fairly and by justice, I have the right to go back and cut down a tree in his yard of equal size, of equal value. Everything must be fair. That's justice. And this thing says, nope, let's go beyond that. You can have justice, but you don't have to have it. You can have something better. You can have forgiveness and compassion. We'll talk about it. This is a hard law. We would have been, I, I don't want to sound trivial about this, we would have been better had Jesus never said this. Because he took the, the right of justice and took it way past that. It's just like when we talked back uh, uh, some time ago, it took us a while to get through a divorce. Divorce is allowed uh, uh, by a law, justly so. It can, be, it can be accomplished. But it's not required. So, uh, uh, he says here, we need to remember justice was under the law, but love is under Jesus Christ. Amen? Man, this 20 minutes is not good. Here we're going to see the work of this love. Jesus said in John, uh, uh, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another. But how in do we to see that love? If I see an Israelite, I know an Israelite uh, uh, is a Jew. I, know I can identify them to that nation because of the way they serve the law. Even though they perverted it, they still tried, uh, they still manifest the law. All the nations of the Gentiles knew that only Israel had a law, had a temple, had a God uh, uh, that did all the sacrifice. Everything they did, they served God by the law. How then do we serve Jesus by love? Well, we still get justice, but it's not a requirement. In fact, Jesus said it's not even what we're supposed to be looking for. That's bad. Amen? Every time somebody smites me on my right cheek, I say, hmm, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And Jesus says, no, you have another cheek. I heard one guy say, you got two, two swings. Hit me on the right side, hit me on the left, and I'm going to kill you. That's not what that teaches. Amen? 
If you've never heard that, I've, I've heard that a lot. Mm. So we, uh, uh, we find that the work of this new commandment, this work of love that's required in us that the Bible says in John identifies us with Jesus. That's how we're identified with Jesus is by this love of God that we manifest. And so I just wrote down, and you, all, you understand, you've heard all this before. We are to resist the evil of retaliation. And it is an evil. Retaliation is an evil. Even if you call it justice, it's still an evil. Except that justice is mediated by a judicial system. It's vigilantism. Amen? You don't have to have a right to go take an eye for an eye. That's vigilante. If you are uh, uh, desiring to make justice of yourself, it's not the way it should be done. Bitterness comes to one who encourages evil of, of uh, hatred in his heart. Uh, uh, and the seed of retaliation is laid in that attitude. Look in verse, I think it is, what is it? Matthew 544? Yes, it is. Look at 544. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Whoa. Now, wait a minute. What does justice say? If your enemy hates you, balance the scale, you have a right to hate him. Amen? And Jesus, he says in 44, but I say, oh, I look at 43, this is so good. Ye have heard that it hath been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. See, that's exactly what justice is all about. Love is due those who love you, and violence is due those that treat you violently. That's why we have wars. But anyway, and, and, this is what he, and this is how he answers it, verse 44. But I say unto you, that's what you've heard, that's how you've practiced it, but let me show you what I say. Love your enemies. Uh-oh. That doesn't even sound good. Love your enemies. Go on. Bless them that curse you. If they curse you, you can curse them. That's justice. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. That verse just took the Christian believer way past justice. So far past justice that most of us have a hard time accomplishing it. Amen. Amen. My wife asks me all the time because I'm a person of some colorful attitudes. <clears throat> and she reminds me often that the Bible says, do unto others as you would have them to do unto you, not as they do to you, which is what they, Israel, believed it should be. Evil for evil, good for good, hate for hate, an eye for an eye, a foot for a foot. This portion of Scripture puts a whole new light on how terribly corrupt Israel was and how terribly corrupt many churches are today because we follow not this idea of love. So then that a heart or evil that is held in the heart brings a bad attitude, brings a, a carnal attitude in the believer that he walks not after the Spirit because the Spirit is love. Even if you're walking under perfect law, it's not walking in the Spirit. It is by applying these verses, such as in verses 45, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. You know what Jesus just said? It's not your place to seek justice when Jesus or God goes way past justice. Everybody in this world is lost and hates God. God would be perfectly within his judicial right to cast them into hell today. Yet he still gives them rain. Still lets them grow crops. And they hate him. And that's exactly what he's saying to us. We live in a world, and if you should live godly, you will be persecuted. And he says, take it in stride and love them anyway. Now I'm going to tell you right up front, that is not able to be done except that you apply the love of God by the Spirit of God. I can't do it. My wife, as I was going to tell you, my wife tells me all the time, you ought to be able to do better than what you do. Because I get, I mean, you can't believe I got upset at a microwave that I've been putting in. I mean, it burned up. I had to put in a new one. I got up. How do you get upset at an inanimate object? Amen? When we were young men, my twin brother and I, uh, he had bought a, some of you older folks in here, you young guys won't you remember it, a 442 Oldsmobile. Some of y'all remember that? Great car. And uh, 
something happened. We were working on it. We were putting in a, a, a water pump or an alternator. I can't remember which one it was. But he lost his temper. It wasn't me. I, I did those things, but I didn't do it then. And we had a hammer there for, I guess we was putting in a water pump. You know, back east you had to take half the motor off to get the water pump out. And he took that ball peen hammer round end up with a hood up on the car and went, bam, bam, bam. And then closed the hood and it went, uh, uh, uh. that was not smart. He said, I asked him, why'd you do that? Well, I was mad. What was you mad at? You mad at that car? What did it do? It's just standing there with the hood up like you put it. Anyway, anger in your heart breeds retaliation, which will breed a wounded spirit. Loving or fulfilling Christ's new commandment is not easy by any, in any step of the imagination. Verses 46 uh, tells us, For if ye love them that which love you, what reward have you? I love my wife. Because she loves me. She feeds me. She coddles me. She takes care of me. She encourages my love. And it's easy to love her. She's a very lovely lady. I, on the other hand, not so much. God really blesses her. Amen? With a lot of grace in that area. So he says, what, what reward do you think there is to you if you love those that love you? Because that's what the law said. Love the ones that love you. Hate the ones that hate you. Justice. Amen? He says, what reward is there in that? But what, uh, what we should do is love them which hate you. Amen? Uh, uh, it says, for if you love, uh, love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same? What's different than you in your life than a lost man's life if, if all you seek is equality or justice? What difference is it? You love those that love you? Okay. Then he says, and if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans do so or so? But ye therefore perfect, even as, I'm sorry, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. What he says is that our goal is not to find justice in the world. Our goal is to do or be what Jesus is. Not justice. Amen. Amen. Back up a little bit. I may go back and do this next week because I haven't got to get to it tonight. Uh, yes, verse 40. And if any man will sue thee uh, at law and take away thy coat, uh, let him have your cloak also, and whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that ask thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, uh, uh, turn not thou away. Boy, I'm telling you, he just gave some bad bad stuff for us to have to do there. Can you help me, brother? Well, not today. I'm hungry, brother. Well, that's okay. God will take care of you. But the one I wanted to focus on, give me two minutes and I'll quit. Well, whatever it might take. God expects us to do more. In Rome, during this time, there was a law. A Roman law that Jews hated it. In fact, to be honest with you, all the population of Rome hated it. Okay? And it said that if somebody that worked for the government, a soldier, a politician, uh, someone who worked for the government, and I'm assuming that would even include a tax collector such as Matthew, if their income was connected to Rome, they were an ambassador of Rome, this is what happened. They could walk through Israel. If they had a burden to bear, they could say to you, Jew or Gentile, if you are living in Rome, you will carry my burden one mile. That's the law. If you, this is, I read this in Josephus. Josephus said, anywhere you went in Rome in, this, in that day, there were stakes driven around down every roadway in exactly one mile increments. So that when you were requested to bear that burden for a mile, the law said you had to do it. You were not balanced with the law if you refused to do it. Fairness and justice was you obeyed the law, you carried the pack for one mile. This is what Jesus said. And when you got to the end of that mile, before you got there, that guy was already looking for somebody else. Hey, you, come over here, carry this to the next mile. 
And all he did was get people to carry his burden mile after mile after mile. He said, if you carry it for him a mile, then show him you're doing it because you care about him and carry it a second mile. Do it because you want him to know you're identifying with Jesus Christ and bearing his burden for him without a law, without a legal principle. You're doing it because you want to show him that even God loves him. Isn't that something? How many of us still do that? And I'm not talking about Someone comes by and they say, can you help me with this? Do you do as little as you can or as much as you can? Somebody needs, uh, we've all had this and I know you have too. Somebody catches you somewhere and says, can you help me with some gas? And the first question is, how much you want? Well, five dollars worth, I got a dollar when you do have five. Amen? Amen. Are we trying to demonstrate that our Lord is selfish? What happened to that going the second mile? When it don't cost us nothing, sounds pretty good. But it'll always, when you go the second mile, it will always cost you something. Well, I'm going to stop there. We will start in, guess this, guess, get this, Matthew 6. <laughs> next week. Amen. Lord God, we thank you so much for your love toward us. We pray you'll bless. And again, thank you for the good rain. Praying for those who are ill. Praying for those uh, such as the brother Miss Irwin who are dealing with the loss of loved ones. We ask God that you will just uh, give us a great week and we'll, uh, we'll meet you here again on the Lord's Day to celebrate who you are. In Jesus' name, amen.